Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, my name is Mackenzie Child and this is episode four out of five in the Ruby on Rails From the Ground Up series. Last week we discussed the uh, basics of the Ruby programming language and I'm so excited because this week we're gonna jump in and start building our Rails application. So I don't wanna wait any longer, let's just jump in and get going. Okay, so now for the fun part. I found that the best way to learn Rails is actually by building a Rails application. As we go through this video, I'm gonna stop and explain what's going on and the various concepts that we are using. But with that said, let's uh, jump in and start going. I'm gonna open up uh, Sublime Text, the terminal, or iTerm, as well as Chrome. So inside of your terminal, that's where we're gonna begin. Uh, let's. Uh, CD, uh, CD stands for change directory, and I'm gonna go into my code folder, um, and inside of there, I'm going to make a new directory. So I'm gonna do mkdir, uh, which stands for make directory, and I'm gonna create a directory called devtips. I'm going to CD into that devtips directory. Then inside of here, we are going to create our new Rails application. So very briefly before, um, if I do rails-v, you can see I'm using Ruby 2.2.3 uh, patch 130 or 173. And if I do rails-v, I'm using rails 4.2.4. All right, so uh, to create a new Rails application, it's very simple. You just do rails new and then the name of the app. So I'm gonna do rails new and I'm just gonna call this blog. All right, so what that did is, if we scroll back up, it created a whole bunch of files, pretty much everything you need to get up and running very quickly. Um, and it also did a command called bundle install. And what that does is it goes out and fetches and downloads all of the uh, gems required for Rails to run properly. And a gem is simply a uh, bundled up package of code. So now that that has been created, let's CD into the app. So I'm gonna do CD blog. So now that that's done, let's make sure everything was installed correctly by running the Rails server. So the Rails server command boots up the um, web brick server that comes with Rails by default and allows you to code locally. Uh, so as you can see, it says Rails 4.2.4 application starting in element on localhost port 3000. So let's copy that, go over to Chrome and paste that in, take a look. So it says, welcome aboard, we're writing Ruby on Rails. If you click about your application, uh, you can see uh, Rails version 4.2.4, Ruby version 2.2.3. So congratulations, you have just created your first Rails application. So at this point, your Rails application doesn't do much of anything. So we're gonna go through and add a bunch of functionality uh, to get our blog up and running. But first I want to briefly go through uh, the structure of our Rails app and discuss some of the files that we're gonna be using in this video. So go back to the terminal. I'm gonna hit Control C to uh, get out of the Rails server. And then I'm gonna do a command called, um, let's see, I'm gonna do cd dot dot. And what that does is it jumps a directory up, so I'm gonna go back into the dev tips directory. From here, let's do open space period. And that's gonna open this up in the finder. So from here, I can simply drag this folder onto Sublime and have that open there. So let me X out and CD back into the blog directory. Cool, let me clear that. Now inside of the blog. So the very first directory, uh, the app directory. This is where you're gonna be spending the majority of your time and effort uh, building your application. Uh, this contains the models, views, and controllers, or the MVC framework for your app, as well as it has assets, helpers, and mailers. The assets directory is where you're gonna store your images, uh, your JavaScript, as well as your style sheets. So if we move on to the bin directory, so the bin directory contains app executables or Ruby scripts for using things like the bundle command, um, the rails and the rate command that we use inside of our terminal. Next, the config directory. This directory contains the configuration code uh, that your application needs for the tiny amount of configuration you may need to do when uh, building your application. Uh, inside of here, the database.yaml file 
uh, is where you'll configure the database you use for each environment. Uh, Rails uses the SQLite 3 database by default, but on production, you will want to use something like uh, PostgreSQL or MySQL. Later in the series, when we deploy our application to Heroku, we are going to be using the PostgreSQL in the production environment, but we're still going to be using SQLite 3 to develop locally. Next, we have the uh, routes.rb file. Uh, the routes.rb file handles the mapping of incoming web requests to your application. Uh, this we're going to add new routes for our app based on the features we want to build. Uh, for example, when we want post, we would create routes inside of this, and then that is how we would navigate through our application. All right, next we have the DB directory. So this directory contains a few files and subdirectories called migrations. So as we build our Rails application, you create database migrations, which is how you can create and modify tables in our database. Uh, those files do not show up just yet because we have yet to create any models um, in our application. But once we do, uh, those will show up here. The lib directory. Uh, this directory is for reusable code libraries. It comes with two subdirectories, assets and tasks. Um, but unless you have some custom stuff, for example, custom rate task, I'm not sure it makes sense to uh, have stuff here as most stuff would make more sense to live in the app directory. Next, the log. This directory contains the application log files, which are good for debugging. When working in the development environment, you'll see uh, the development dot log file and there will be different ones for test and production environments. Next, the public directory. Uh, this directory contains files like uh, the 404.html, the 500.html, etc. Basically like the error pages for your application. These are put here because uh, these files will still work even if your application crashes. Anything put here will be available for anyone to view. For example, if they went to uh, example.com slash 404.html, they'd be able to access this file. So don't put anything in here that you wouldn't want uh, the public to see. Next, we have the test directory. Uh, if you write tests for your application to make sure it runs uh, the way it should, uh, test-driven development is the idea of writing a test first, then writing the code to make it pass, then refactoring it. Um, if you write any tests, it should live in this directory. Next, the temp directory. Uh, this directory contains uh, temporary files such as cache, PID, and session files uh, for intermediate processing. Then we have the vendor directory. Uh, this directory contains the assets needed by third-party gems. Next, we have the gem file and the gem file.lock. Uh, these files allow you to say which gem dependencies are needed in your app. Uh, they're used by the bundler gem, which uh, again, goes out and fetches the gems you'll be using and then downloads them for this application. The rake file is used to locate and load tasks that can be run from the command line. And then finally, the readme.rdoc. Uh, this file is used to uh, tell other developers what your application does, how it works. Uh, think of the readme as an in instruction manual for your application. You can really put anything here. Uh, but it's good to inform uh, other people working on the same project what the application is all about. Okay, so now that we've gone through the structure of the Rails application, let's begin by setting up a model, controller, and a view uh, for the posts in our application. So in our blog, we want uh, the ability to create, read, update, and destroy posts. Um, those actions are otherwise known as CRUD. Uh, to be able to store and manipulate data, we need a model. Remember, models are Ruby classes that handle the business logic and do the heavy lifting in your application. They talk with the database, uh, validate data, etc. So let's hop into the terminal and create our first model. First thing I want to do is let's uh, run the Rails server. You can run Rails S as a uh, shorthand for the Rails server. And then what I'm going to do is hit Command T. And then from here, let's CD into the code directory and the dev tips and then the blog application. Um, the reason we are doing two different tabs 
is because uh, one, we want to have our uh, Rails server running so we can see what we're doing in one. And then on the other, we're gonna be working and writing uh, our code. All right, so to create a model, we're gonna use the Rails generate command. So uh, a shorthand for that is Rails G, or you could write out uh, generate. And the thing we are generating is a model. So we do rails generate model and then the name of the model, we're gonna call this post. And then we want to add a few attributes. Uh, so a post will have a title, which will be a string, and then the body of the post, which will be text. So quickly, what exactly is happening here? Well, first off, we're using the rails generate command to create a new model called post. But what about the title colon string and the body colon text? Uh, these are telling rails that in addition to creating the post model, we also want to add uh, these columns to our post table in the database with the attributes of string and text. There are several different attributes you can use for various columns uh, in the database, which are meant for different things. Uh, the majority of the time you'll be using a string. A string is used for small data types, such as a title. Columns are strings by default, so for example, if I just said body, it would create a body uh, column, but it would create it as a string. Uh, but instead, we want text. Text is used for longer pieces of textual data, such as paragraph. Let's uh, hit enter and run this command. So this command creates, uh, you can see under db migrate, creates a migration file, uh, creates our model under app models post.rb. And then it creates uh, some test files for us as well. So if we go into Sublime Text and we go under App, Models, and Post.rb, you can see we have class of post, which inherits from Active Record Base. Also, the database, if we go under the Migrate folder and look at that migration, so in addition to the Post.rb file, this is what uh, that created for us. So this is going to create a table in our database called Posts. And that table is going to have two columns, uh, title and body, with attributes of string and text. So the post model hasn't actually been created just yet. We have to run a command called rake um, in order to migrate our database. So back in our terminal, let's run rake db colon migrate. So that went ahead and created the post table um, inside of our database, and you can see uh, if we go back to uh, Sublime Text under DB, uh, there's now a file called schema.rb. So the schema.rb is basically a snapshot of the current state of your database. Uh, you never actually want to edit anything directly inside of here because that can get very messy. Uh, you want to manage your schema.rb through the use of uh, migration files. All right, so now we have our model set up, but we need a way to interact with it. So for that, we're gonna do a controller, and we're also gonna create a uh, view at the same time. So remember, the controller is what lives between your model and your view. The controller gets data from the model and then renders it to the view. So we can generate a controller much in the same way that we did our model. What we would do is back in our terminal, we'd run Rails generate, and instead of model, we would do controller, then we would want to do the name of the controller and any actions that we want. So let's do Rails generate controller posts. Uh, notice this is plural. And then we are gonna do an index action. So hit enter and you can see that this created a bunch of stuff for us. So it created a um, post controller.rb file, um, as well as it created a view directory of posts. And inside of that directory, there's index.html.erb as well as it created some test helpers and some uh, JavaScript and CSS or SCSS files for us. So you may be wondering what the action does. Well, first off, you don't have to have that in the generate command, it's completely optional. If you do include it, Rails will generate a view file, a route, and will write the action inside of the controller for us. For example, if we go back to localhost, we can go to localhost slash post slash index, because of the index action. And we can see uh, we have a view file that was created for us. Now back in Sublime, we go to views, posts, and index.html.erb. You can see uh, we have an H1 with post index, which matches up with the browser 
uh, post index. So in addition to that, it created the controller for us, uh, class of post controller, which is inheriting from the application controller. And then it went ahead and created a def index method for us. And then finally, the routes, if we go under config routes.rb, we can see git uh, post slash index. So Rails went ahead and created the route for us, which allows us to access uh, this view uh, inside of the browser. So congrats, you just created your very first page in your Rails application. So the power of Rails really comes from dynamic content. So now we're gonna go through and add the dynamic functionality and the ability to create, read, update, and destroy posts. So let's begin inside of our routes. Uh, we want more than just the post index. So what we're gonna do is, first off, I'm gonna remove all of these comments because we don't actually need them. Um, and then I'm going to change this line git post slash index to resources colon or space colon posts. So if I save that, you can see what that did. Actually, first off, let me undo that. So we have git post index. If I go back to our terminal and run rake routes, you can see all of the routes uh, currently in our application. So if I go back and change that to resources posts and then hit the up arrow and do the same command, rake routes. You can see we have all of the routes needed for our CRUD uh, actions. So we have uh, post create, post new, post edit, post show, post update, and post destroy. So very quickly, I wanna go through and explain what each of these are because I was a bit confused by it when I first started. So the prefix, uh, this column right here, uh, these are unique routes that you'll be using in your views. These are named routes and are usually combined with a suffix underscore path or underscore URL uh, to form helper methods that we can use in our views. Uh, for example, back in our view, if I was to write link to, I'll say new post, we would do the new post path. And if I click that link, it would go to post slash new. So let me undo that. So next we have the verb. So these have to do with rest or representational state transfer, a communication protocol. Rest uses four HTTP verbs, which correspond to the CRUD actions. Uh, for example, the post right here uh, corresponds to the create action. The get corresponds to the read action. The patch up corresponds to the update action and the delete corresponds to the destroy action. So the create, read, update, and destroy. Next, we have the URI pattern. So this basically specifies the URL associated with each action in the controller. Uh, for example, we have uh, the post index action. Uh, so the URL would be slash posts. We also have the uh, post show and then we would do slash post and then the ID of that post. And then the controller actions, uh, these are pretty self-explanatory. If I go back to the post controller.rb, so the post uh, colon index is the post controller index action. And inside the post controller, we have the def index and we'll be creating the other actions uh, here shortly. All right, so let's set up the ability to create posts. So back in our post controller.rb, let's uh, drop down a few lines and do def, new, and then end. If I save that and go to Chrome and go to post slash new, um, don't be alarmed, we do get an error, uh, but it tells us exactly what we need to do. So it's searching for our template and it cannot find the template. Uh, so it's looking inside of our views under our posts and it's looking for a new.html.erb file, but that file does not exist. Uh, so we can uh, fix this error by going under our posts. Let's click and save a new file. And we will call this new.html.erb. So if I go back to Chrome and refresh, you can see we don't have anything, but that error went away. So on this page, we want the ability to add new posts. So on this page, we want to write a form that's going to interact with our controller action and then save into our model. So if I do h1 and say new post, so let's write the form next. So let's drop down a few lines. I'm going to paste in some code and then I'll explain what everything means. So first off, let me start with the greater than uh, percent equals. So what that 
everything inside of here is Ruby code. So our file is named new.html.erb. Uh, the .erb stands for embedded Ruby. This means that the template has both HTML plus Ruby tags, and these opening and closing tags are how the template is able to differentiate between the HTML and the Ruby that needs to get run. Next, we have a form four. So this is a Rails helper for showing forms in the view and saving the data to our database. So this at post uh, is referencing our model. We still need to tweak our new action inside of our controller before this functionality uh, will work properly. But this is what will allow us to save the data to our model. And then we have the f.label and f.text field for the title as well as the body. Notice the body has a text area. If we refer back to our database, go under db, migrate, look at our migration. Remember, we have two columns, title and body. So what this is doing is it's taking, when we fill out this form and hit submit, uh, we are taking this data and saving it to these columns inside of the database. So what about this F? So really this can be anything, but it's common practice to just do F because uh, that stands for form. So the F.text field uh, colon title, for example, this is where the data from that input will be saved into the title column of the post table in our database. Phew, that was a lot, so let's move on. So if I save that, go back to our browser and refresh, uh, we get yet another error. It says, first argument in the form cannot be nil or empty. So remember when I told you uh, we need to tweak our new action inside the post controller? So let's do that. Let me close out of this and uh, open up the post controller. So inside of here, we need to define uh, what this at post means. So if I do at post equals post.new and then save this, we can go back and refresh and our form now shows up. So the at post equals post.new creates a new post and assigns it to a uh, instance variable called at post. An instance variable or a variable beginning with an at symbol, uh, the at symbol is what allows us to use it inside of our view. For example, if I took this out and just had post equals post.new, we wouldn't be able to access it inside of our view. So let me undo that. All right, so now our model and our views are connected by the controller and everybody's happy. So when we refresh our browser, um, now instead of the error, you'll get a shiny new form instead. If we go ahead and try to create a test post, I'm just gonna say uh, test and just put in some copy for the body and hit create post, unknown action. The action create could not be found for the post controller. Uh, so when we submitted the form, Rails tried to create a new post. It looked in the post controller uh, for a create action to know what to do, but when it got there, the create action did not exist. So we can fix that by going back into our uh, post controller, do def uh, create and end. Inside of our create action, uh, we need to write a few lines. So we're gonna do at post equals post.new, uh, but this one's gonna be a bit different. We're gonna do open and close parentheses, and then we're gonna write post underscore params. So what this is for, this is going to refer to a private method. So uh, before we forget, let's write that. So down below, let's write private, and then let's define what that post params means. So the reason we do this in a private method is because uh, this method will not be needed uh, outside of the postcontroller.rb file. So anything below here is only accessible inside of this file. What we want to do is write params.require, and then we're going to require the post table, and then we're going to permit the various attributes, uh, title and the body. So Rails 4 has a security measure called uh, strong params. Uh, basically, you have to permit the different attributes, for example, title and body, uh, that you want to allow to be written to our database. So back uh, inside of our uh, create method, let's drop down a line, and we're going to do if at post.save, let's uh, redirect to at post, and then we'll do else, we'll render new, end. So basically what we're doing is uh, we're assigning the create method 
we're doing at post equals post at new, and we're permitting the attributes with the post params. Then if the post is able to save, we're going to redirect to the post show page. Else, we're going to re-render the new form. So if I save this and go back, let me refresh and enter test post, and I'll just put in some copy and hit create post. So we get another error, but this is a different error. It says the action show could not be found. Uh, but if you look, we have a localhost port 3000 slash post slash one. So this went to the slash posts. If we refer back in our terminal, the post show, uh, the URI pattern is post and then the ID of that post. So we went to the very first post that was created with the ID of one. Uh, so we can fix this error by going back into our post controller. Let's do def show end. So inside the show method, let's uh, write at post equals uh, capital, capital P post dot find. And then we're going to find the post by the params of colon ID. So every post we create will have a unique ID. And that's how Rails is able to find the correct post that we're talking about. So if I save that, go back to Chrome and refresh, we get yet another error, but this one is different. So we have a missing template error. So if we go back to Sublime, let me uh, clean this up real quick. Um, inside of our views posts, uh, it's looking and it's looking for show.html.erb, uh, which does not exist just yet. So let's uh, create that. Let's do show.html.erb. So if I go back to Chrome refresh, uh, we don't get any errors anymore, uh, but nothing is showing up. So this is where stuff gets pretty cool. Let's write uh, the following code. H1, then we're gonna do opening Ruby at post.title. And then below here, let's do a div. And then we'll do opening Ruby at post.body. And then close that. So if we go back and refresh, you can see uh, it now says test post and the gibberish we entered when we created the post. So what this is doing is it's uh, taking, it's referencing the at post and our controller is able to find the correct post, access it through the database and our view is rendering it inside of the browser. Pretty cool stuff, right? All right, so next let's create the ability to read posts. What we'll wanna do is view all of our posts on our homepage. So how can we do that? Well, let's go back to our index.html.erb file and uh, let's write what is known as a loop. All right, so I'm gonna do opening Ruby. One thing to note real quick is uh, we have two different Ruby tags. So this is a Ruby tag and this is a Ruby tag. The difference between them is the equal sign. So what this does is this runs the Ruby code inside of our file. So uh, this does the same thing, but this will print out the result of that Ruby code into our view. So back inside here, uh, let's do at posts dot each do post. And then down here, we'll do end. Inside of here, let's write h2, and then we'll do opening Ruby post dot title. And then let's do a div with opening Ruby post dot body. And then let's create a uh, BR tag and then let's do opening Ruby. Let's create a link to that post show page. So we can do link to, and then we'll do uh, say read post, and then we'll go to the post. So if we go back to our browser and go to just slash posts, uh, we do get an error. Uh, you can see the app post is trying to run so back in our controller, we need to define what at post means. So if we do at post equals post.all and save that, refresh, um, all of the posts are now looping through and being printed on this page. Can't really tell much since there's only one post. So real quick, I'm going to create a bunch more posts. All right, so uh, as you can see, we are looping one by one through all of the posts and they are getting rendered by our view. So basically back in our Sublime, uh, what this is doing is it's going through at the app post variable, which if remember it's uh, 
grabbing all of the posts and assigning it to that variable. Then we have the do block and we have uh, this post. So remember in our post show page, we have at post. Uh, we are using the at symbol because we are not looping through. We just are finding a particular one related to at post. But inside of the loop, uh, we just reference the single post. So this is going one by one through each of the posts. The at post is referencing each in individual one. Then for each one, it's printing out the title and the body and creating a link to that post. So back in Chrome, if I click on any of the links, it does go to the correct post. Uh, you can see post that four, uh, post slash one, pretty cool. So a few things I wanna do real quick is back in our post controller in our index method, uh, let's do dot order and then opening parentheses created underscore at DESC. So what this is doing is it's ordering all of our posts, it's grabbing all of them, then ordering them in descending order based on what time they were created. So the standard blog has the most recent post up top. So if I save that, refresh, you can see the most recently created post is now up top and the older posts are down low. Pretty awesome. The next thing I want to do is I want to use a helper method called truncate. So basically what this is gonna do is we're gonna wrap this in parentheses, the post.body, and then we want to do comma length uh, hash rocket equals uh, less than, and then I'm gonna do 35. So if I save that, go back and refresh, basically this creates an excerpt. So it takes 35 characters um, and limits the uh, body to the first 35. So if I change this to say 150, go back and refresh, uh, you can see the first 150 characters. I think about 250 would be a good number. So it gives us a little blurb from our post on our homepage. And then if we go and read the post, we can see the full text here. So this is coming along great. One issue though, is if we go back to localhost, uh, port 3000, we still have the welcome board you're writing Ruby on Rails page. Uh, we don't want to have to force our users to go to slash post each time in order to see all the available posts. So how can we get the index action to show up on our homepage? Well, it's actually super simple. If we go back to Sublime and go into our routes file, uh, we just need to add a single line, root uh, posts index. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna go into the post controller index action and make that the root of our application. So if I save that, go back to localhost port 3000 refresh, you can see the post index action now shows up on the homepage. Pretty fantastic. All right, we are making pretty good progress. Next, let's add the ability to update text. So for example, if I say, uh, notice there was a typo in the title, uh, we would need a way to edit that text and then save it back into our database. Uh, so to do that, we do it much like we did for the create action. I'm gonna go below def show and I'm gonna do def edit end. And then while we're at it, do def update end. So inside of here, we are going to uh, do at post, whoops, at post equals uh, post.find params of ID. And then I'm gonna copy that because we're gonna use the same thing in our update action. But this one, just like the create action, is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna do if at post.update based on the post params, uh, we're gonna redirect back to the post show page. So we're gonna do redirect to at post. Then else we are gonna render the edit form end. So as you may be able to see already, this is getting a little messy. We have the same code written three different times, uh, which we do not want to do. Uh, one of the principles of Rails is dry or don't repeat yourself. So to clean this up a bit, we are going to create what is known as a before action. So right up top, right below the uh, class of post controller, I'm gonna do before underscore action. And then I'm going to call this uh, find post which we have not written yet, uh, but we will. So we're gonna do 
before action, find post, and we only want to find the post on those three that we're duplicating. So the show, edit, and update. So I'm gonna do only colon, and then show, edit, and update. And let's add a space between those. Now we can uh, remove these three. Let me copy one just to, all right. So this does not work just yet because we need to write this uh, find post method. So under the private methods, let's create the def find underscore posts or find post. Then inside of here, we're gonna create that at post equals post dot find by params of ID. Before this gets run, we're gonna run the find post and it's going to find the post based on the ID for the for the show, edit, and the update method. So if we go back and refresh, everything should still be working correctly as it is. Awesome. So let's uh, go ahead and continue on with our edit action. So back in the URL, if we go to post slash post slash three, and then we add slash edit, we get template is missing. Uh, so as before, what we need to do is create that template inside of our view file. So under views post, let's create a new file and save this as edit.html.erb. So if I go back and refresh, we don't get that error anymore, but it's blank. So what we wanna do is uh, add that same form from our new file, and we're gonna use that for our edit. Uh, but again, we don't want to uh, repeat the same code in multiple places. So what we're gonna do is create a partial file. So how we do that is let's create a new file, save this, we're gonna do underscore form.html.erb. So I'm gonna go into the new.html.erb, copy this form, and then paste it here. So let's save that, and then we can close out of it. And then all we need to do is uh, render this form. So we're gonna do opening Ruby, and then we're gonna do render form. So if I copy that same line and go to the edit, let's say h1, edit uh, post, and then below here, I will do that. Uh, go back and refresh. You can see uh, the edit page now shows up with the form, but it's already preloaded with our content. And Rails is smart enough to be able to use the same form uh, inside of our partial and differentiate whether we are editing or creating a new post, which is pretty fantastic. It does the bulk of the work for us. So uh, back in our post controller, we have the def update action written. So if the post is able to save, we're gonna redirect back to our post show, else it's gonna create or render this edit form again. So I'm going to say, change the title to this works, parentheses, I hope, and then let's update the post. Cool, so now you can see we are back on post slash three and we have the title of this works. Beautiful. Back inside of our show page, uh, let's add a link to be able to easily get to the edit. Under the post body div, let's add a link to method, link underscore to, and I'll say edit post. And then uh, back inside of our terminal, if we remember the post edit action, uh, we would do edit posts, and then we would append path. So we're gonna do edit post path, and then just like we need to do for the title and the body, we need to find which post uh, it's talking about. So in parentheses, do at post, and then let's close that. Save, go back and refresh. Now if we hit edit, beautiful. It goes to the edit page uh, perfectly. All right, now to delete posts. So we're almost finished with the CRUD functionality. All we need now is to, the ability to delete posts. Back inside of our post controller, Below the update method, let's create def uh, destroy and end. Then uh, just like the show, edit, and update actions, we need to find which post we're destroying. So instead of writing that again, let's uh, simply add it to the before action. So we're gonna add destroy. And then down here, since we're finding the post, all we have to do is do at post.destroy and then we need to redirect the user to uh, where, wherever we want to redirect them after they destroy the post. In this case, we're gonna redirect them to the root path. 
uh, which is the home page. So save that and then let's uh, create a link to destroy that inside of our show file. So this one's a little bit different. Let's do a link to, and I'll say, uh, let's do delete post. And then we are going to do the post underscore path. And then we're going to find which post we're referring to. And then this one's a little bit different. We're going to do method. We're going to do delete and then data opening curly uh, confirm colon and then in parentheses or uh, in quotations we're going to do are you sure and then let's close that ruby tag so save that what this is doing is it's uh, finding the post and we are uh, doing a method of delete on this link so it's not going to go to a separate page but instead delete this post and we're also going to throw up a confirmation so if we go back to Chrome and refresh, uh, the delete link now shows up. If we hit that, uh, the confirmation pops up, are you sure? And if we hit correct or okay, it uh, deletes that post and redirects us back to the homepage. Beautiful. So all of our CRUD actions are working correctly. Let's see, the next thing I wanna do is let's add some navigation. Let's do layouts and go to application.html.erb. So this is the file that gets loaded on every single page in our application. So for example, if I just say h1 and write some gibberish, save that, refresh, you can see it shows up here and it also shows up on the post show page. So this will show up on every single page in our app. So obviously I don't want that, so I'm gonna remove that line. So one important line on this page is the uh, opening Ruby and then the yield. So basically what this does is it renders uh, our various view files uh, inside of our application template. So if I, for example, commented uh, this out and went back and refreshed, uh, nothing shows up. So let's undo that. All right. So I want some navigation to be able to uh, jump around between the pages. So we want a home link and a new post link. So to create the home link, uh, we simply do a link to tag and I'll say home. Then we go to the root path. The root is our uh, home page and close that. Then the new post, we'll do another link to say new post. And then we are going to go to the new underscore post. Uh, remember back in our terminal, we have the rake routes, new post and then we would append path. So save that. All right, now we can access new post, jump home, and that is on every single page in our application. So let's take a minute and review what we've done. Uh, we have created our uh, models, views, and controllers, so the full MVC framework. So we have the functionality to be able to create, read, update, and destroy posts. So at this point, I'm pretty confident that you know the basics of Rails. All right, guys, that was a long one. Uh, but thank you for sticking with me till the end. Uh, next week, we are going to take the application we built today, and we're going to use the Heroku hosting service and deploy it live on the web so that anyone can see it. This video was, of course, sponsored by and made possible by the awesome patrons of the DevTips community uh, who have each pledged an amount of their choosing to help support uh, the DevTips channel and make these videos possible. The patrons get access to these videos a few days early and on this particular series they get access to the code um, that we created uh, in this video. If you want to find out more and join me as a patron of the DevTips community, uh, go to patreon.com devtips. And until next week, when we uh, deploy our Rails app to Heroku, keep on hacking.